Welcome to the Divorced Playbook Podcast, or whatever this has become. It's been a bit. I have no new information, but I'm recording this. I might not even post this, but if you're listening to it, clearly I have, so there's some time travel for you. But I, I, I had some things happen this week, the last few weeks, that I thought warranted discussion. There were some questions I had for people who often respond to us, certainly other people have been dealing with similar things when it comes to parenting, when it comes to meeting new people. And so I, I, I didn't want to just ignore all of the listeners by not posting something. And it's taken me a bit to wrap my head around how to do this, how to continue to do this, just talking myself and have no answers otherwise. So I'm going to awkwardly push beyond that and say, I was thinking about this a lot over the last couple of days, and I want to get to it because I got a lot of feedback from some comments I made in the last uh, few episodes with regard to people ghosting or letting you know and things like that. So um, I, I want to try and play something. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this properly, but I'm going to try, play a couple of things, forget the theme for the theme song for the day, but but this is there's certainly a theme for the day. So we're going to attempt to do this in a way that is effective. Let's see if I can pull it off while I'm talking. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. But anyway, this first clip is going to be from The Good Place. And if people have listened to the show enough, you know that this is a very important show to me. What do we owe to each other? That is the question Tim Scanlon asked decades ago, and it is the question I will try to answer over the next three hours. Ugh, no thanks. We all have a voice in our head. That voice doesn't tell us what to do or not do, but it does warn us when we do things that don't feel good or right. The difference between reasonable. What does it mean to be a reasonable person? I may have a different definition of so reasonable. So why do it then? Things. Why choose to be good every day if there is no guaranteed reward we can count on now or in the afterlife? I argue that we choose to be good because of our bonds with other people and our innate desire to treat them with dignity. Simply put, we are not in this alone. We are not in this alone. And that is difficult at times to remember now in the context of the show for people who didn't watch the good place if you saw if you're watching on our youtube you see kristen bell eleanor shellstrop is the name of her character she's a terrible person goes to the afterlife blah blah blah, blah. i will not give away anything on the show um but th that's an opportunity for her to better herself and i think that's sort of the the theme of the show over four seasons and if again you have not watched it I mean, this is one of those things I always say, but like, for Christ's sake, stop this, because whatever I say is not important compared to whatever that show had to say. So stop this, go on Netflix, there's no commercials, there's 12 or 13 episodes, and they're less than a half an hour. So do the math, that's two days, less than, it's probably like a 24 hour span, you could probably bang through that whole show. And if you start, I wouldn't sleep, I would just watch the whole thing through. But the question that was raised in that video, which sort of was the overall theme of that entire program, which will be the overall theme of this program, is what we owe to each other. What do we owe to each other? I don't know the answer to that. My guess is nothing. Right? Well, I don't owe you anything. Or do I? And that's what's uncomfortable for me, and that's what I'm unsure about. Because we haven't put up more than, we put up three shows in a month or so. I feel like we owe you better than that. I feel like we owe you more than that. Because you were loyal up to this point through 40-something episodes, and then it just sort of vanished. It's frustrating. And I don't think anybody out there has said, like, hey, what the F, where are you? Which I appreciate. But, but I definitely feel like, you know, for people who are loyal, for people who care, 
what do we owe them? We owe them something. We owe them the respect of their time. And I think that's the overall concept of this. And this is beyond just dating and parenting and whatnot. Um, I got in a conversation this week, uh, my oldest is 14, and got in a conversation where it was basically uh, teenagers don't want to hang out with their dads and teenagers aren't going to think their dads are cool. And at first it started out as like a joke because I'm like a cool dad or whatever, but, but then it became a thing. And I said, in response to that, I understand that teenagers are not going to want to spend time with their parents. They're not going to want to go to a record store or buy cool t-shirts in Spencer gifts, which whatever. Um, because that's not cool to hang out with their dad, even if their dad likes similar things to them. I understand that. But I feel, given my experience growing up, that I owe it to my kids. I owe it to myself to still put in that effort, to still try. You don't have to like it. You don't have to even say yes, but why would I ever stop asking to do things with you? I owe it to you best I can in this way station of a life I've spooned out for myself. It's not even carving because I don't have the tools to carve, maybe digging a hole, but the hole isn't frankly that big. So I'm spooning it out for lack of a better term. But I feel like I owe it to myself, but I owe it more to my kids. So what do we owe to each other? What do you owe to your kids? I think you owe them the effort of trying to be a good parent. That doesn't mean you're always going to do the right thing. That doesn't mean you're always going to say the right thing. Frankly, it doesn't even mean that you're going to think the right thing. You may disagree with your kid because of our own biases, antiquated views of the world. I argue with people all the time about things that kids now, it's just common practice for them. But people our age are still just so non-progressive that it's like mind boggling that we're even having these conversations. And that, which I'll spare for one second, goes to the whole concept of, of American politics. And again, there's a lot of shit going on in the world right now. We don't need to get into that part of it. But in the context of what we owe to each other, it's effort and it's respect and it's honesty. I don't know if you know, excuse me, I don't know if you owe people you just met honesty. But I think it's an important thing to owe to the ones you care the most about. I personally try very hard to be honest with everyone. If anyone asks me a question, I will answer it. If anyone uh, I meet on a dating site or whatever, I'm probably going to overshare because I believe in full disclosure. I believe in honesty. And I believe that by getting to that early on, it helps figure out what it's going to be. Because to be honest, like if you piecemeal what you like or who you are, get the person to like you, get them on the hook. It's not fishing. I know plenty of fish in the sea, whatever, but that's not what it is. You're not throwing the hook and then you just reel it back a little bit. Reel, and then when they get a bite, then you got to reel it in, reel it in, reel it in. It's not exactly like that. It's just like getting someone on the hook who's then going to fall off the hook or who you're going to have to reel all the way in doesn't make any sense to me because why wouldn't you just be honest up front? We need to give them time to get to know you before you drop the bomb on them. Well, isn't the bomb part of who you are? Isn't the bomb what you owe them at the beginning? And more frankly, isn't it what you owe yourself? Why am I going to go out with someone on a date, play this game that they think I'm something I'm not, or that they think I'm someone I'm not to get them to fall for me to then what either disappoint them because whatever I portrayed wasn't my true self or it was my true self but I was holding stuff back and then as they get to know me second date third date fourth date what have you they stop liking that part 
And that seems to happen to me quite a bit in terms of being friend zoned or being ghosted or whatever is obviously look, the people who I'm getting that by are going out, we're going out and it's either too much too soon or people just don't like other people. People don't, you know, sometimes don't click that you don't have to have a specific reason. And sometimes even if you do have to have a reason, you don't know what the reason is. And so if you don't know the reason, then how can you tell the other person? It's just a feeling. That's fine. I mean, it's difficult to articulate at times. I, I, I don't know. I, I got a, a text recently that was one of the best texts I think I've gotten, which was basically, I had a great time. I don't see this going anywhere romantically, but the things we did were fun. If you want to hang out and con continue to do those things, I would be down for that. If you think there's more, we're on a different page. Paraphrasing. That's a difficult email or text rather to write, but it's awesome. And even if the answer is, hey, I had a great time, but I don't see a future. Somebody who I had matched with on a site hadn't seen or heard from a while. They're pretty local. I sent a message. I was like, hey, I just wanted to check in, see if you're interested in hanging out. I'm not doing anything this weekend. And the response was, yeah, I'm not interested anymore. And it was like, Kurt, like, and I wrote back, I appreciate you letting me know. And they wrote back right away. Absolutely no problem. You know, good luck with everything. How hard is that? But do we owe it to the other person? At what point do we owe it to the other person? Is it after you match with them? Because for people who are on Tinder, you notice that Tinder, again, threw up all over the app and all of the old people you matched with are now at the top and all of the people you most recently matched with went to the bottom of your list. And for people like me who have like 150 people or whatever, like it's hard to find people all of a sudden. And everybody's post came up as new. So all these people that you haven't heard from in a while think that you just sent them something, which is hilarious because I'm getting messages from people who I matched with 14, 15 months ago who must think I just sent them something. I have no idea. And I look and I'm like, well, I didn't write that person back when they wrote something. Did I owe them an explanation? No, the conversation just kind of dissipated. Had they written two or three messages back and said like, hey, I haven't heard from you. I just want to make sure you're okay. Then I'm a dick. But if the conversation just sort of waned, at some point, somebody's got to send the last text. Somebody's got to send the last message. Should you say, hey, I don't think this is a good fit? Yeah, of course. Do you owe it to that person? I don't know. And I think everybody can decide that for themselves. And that's a cop out. We should have a standard. But I'm not the one to make that standard. Even if I'm trying, even if I'm talking about it right now. And so at what point do we owe anything to anyone? I recently went, not a date, I would say a meet and greet with someone who I had matched with, who I was very, very interested in. Uh, just seeing in person, seeing if their profile and the texts back and forth presented in person in the same manner, because it was, a, it was an attractive prospect. And we met and talked for three hours, like face to face, three hours. And it was very illuminating, different than I had expected, maybe better, at least better for what I was hoping. Clearly she felt differently because of some of the things that I said, there was at times very judgmental look to, to which even I even said like, wow, your face is very judgmental right now. And it's interesting because part of the reason I felt the attraction to this woman is because I didn't think that there would be judgment because of certain things that she had put in her profile, certain things that she said, it made me feel like she is the type of person who um, would be okay with whatever anybody else also wants to do or whatever. I'm dancing around it because I don't feel like telling you the particulars. But the point is that I thought that part of the benefit of hanging out with this woman would have been because she was open to things, which it turns out she was not, could not hide it or didn't want to hide it. And so that made the end of the time awkward. I actually was saying, because I knew that this was not like a good night kiss situation. 
I was in the process of saying, Hey, uh, I want to give you a good night kiss, but it, it doesn't feel like that. Hopefully we can hang out again and we'll see if there's anything there. And before I could even get the butt out, that's a terrible non sequitur. Before I could get the butt out, she was like, Nope, we just met. And I just started laughing to myself and I'm like, that's fine. If you don't want to give somebody a kiss goodnight, like it's totally within your rights. And frankly, it's better to not give them a kiss goodnight and lead them on if you have no interest. So that, I, that part I appreciated for sure. But it's funny that the logic was we just met. And I just thought like, we, we spent like two full days texting and three hours standing in front of each other. By the way, it was supposed to be like a 15 minute, like, Hey, how are you? And we talked for three hours. It wasn't like a scheduled three hour window. Like we way overstayed what we thought we were going to. So the conversation obviously was good enough to stay that long. And I was like, shit, do you know how much I've done? And I'm sure this woman has done in the three hours. Like think about how many dates you've gone on where by hour three, you're like, okay, this is going somewhere or it's not. So that was hilarious that it's like, we just met. Um, but we texted for the next couple of days, a little less than we had prior. I had asked if they wanted to hang out on Wednesday, which as taping this is a couple of days ago. And it was a tentative. So then on Monday or Tuesday, I sent a message, hey, just wanted to follow up on Wednesday. You know, we kind of weren't, I, I wasn't sure. And it was, I'm not sure if I can. Um, it's going to depend on a delivery that I have. I was like, oh, right. Okay. I forgot. But the delivery, she said, was like the window was done at one o'clock. But, and I wrote back, if you're not interested, or if you are interested, but you had a super long week at work, because she did, totally fine. You know, I, I, we, it, I totally understand. No response. That might have been actually a message I sent on Wednesday at some point. No response. And then, no, I, I'm sorry, I, I want to go back. I did, I did put that a couple of days earlier and didn't hear back. Then on actual Wednesday, by like the end of the day. So it was clear that she wasn't going to text me. I just wrote, hey, um, if you change your mind, you know where to find me. Because I didn't want, I'm certainly not going to say anything angry, but I didn't want to just ignore it. Because I want this person to know, like I'm putting in an effort to try to get to know you. Because I think you are worth that. If you don't think I'm worth that, then it's not a good match and that's okay. But I don't want anyone who I am interested in to think that I'm not. Maybe she was busy and my note jogged her memory and she was like, oh shit, I forgot. I was supposed to hang out with this guy. I, that's not what happened, but but it could have been. But were I just to sit here and wait, that's not, that's not my personality. And again, it was as respectful as possible. Like, hey, you know where I am. And I never heard back. And that got me thinking about a comment that I made on here a couple of episodes ago about the woman who lives, you know, a couple of blocks from me, who I just saw on Tinder again last night. Um, you know, she and I video texted uh, messages. We didn't do like a live video call, but we were sending videos back and forth, almost like a Marco Polo situation, except it was on Instagram direct message. And we were sending texts to each other for over, um, like about a week. And then all of a sudden for, to recap that, she had said she probably will be too tired to hang out and she wants to hang out with her dog and blah, blah, blah. And all I said was, okay, I'll check in. Just let me know. And I texted her the day that we, I was trying to hang out with her and she just never wrote me back at all. And I didn't make any other plans, which I could have. Well, that's on me. But I asked her if she wanted to hang out. She wasn't sure. I could have jumped ship and gone out with someone else, but I didn't. I didn't want to because I had already asked her. And I wanted to have respect for her time to carve out my time in case the same thing happened this Wednesday. I had asked this other woman if she wanted to hang out. Initially it was, yeah, Wednesday I'm free. And then it was, I'm not sure. And I said, okay, but I'm not going to make other plans until I know definitively if this woman can't or can hang out because what if she texted me at 8 15 and was like, Oh my God, my day was a mess, but yeah, I just need to relax. Let me, you know, can we go out and get a drink? I had already planned on being out with this woman at that time, but what, because I didn't hear back. I like just ditched the plans and went out with somebody else. What do we owe to each other? Do I owe her the time? She clearly didn't care. I felt like if I asked someone to hang out, 
it's my responsibility until I hear a definitive no to be available at that time. Unless there's a, a kid situation or family emergency or whatever, but I'm not going to double pack a date until I know for sure that that person's not going to be available. I think that's a shitty thing to do. I feel like if you're going to ask somebody out, you owe it to them to be available at the time that you ask. And so a lot of people gave me shit when I complained that the neighbor or whatever never texted me back. And so I hastened to talk about this situation uh, again, because this woman I actually did hang out with. And so I felt that sort of elevated the responsibility to correspond because we corresponded, then we hung out for a very long time. It was nice. We corresponded again, and then it just went blank. Now, I'm not saying I got ghosted that to me. I mean, technically, I sent two messages, didn't hear back after hanging out and making tentative plans. That is a ghosting, but I've gotten ghosted. So like, that's nothing to me. And I'm not even mad because honestly, it wasn't a good fit. Um, she's weird, but a different kind of weird. And so it probably would not have been something that either of us would have seen as any sort of long-term prospect. So I'm not even mad about that, but it did validate the idea that we are not a good match, that she could not even have the respect for my time to send a text hey, I'm not interested anymore. Or it was great meeting you, but this isn't a good time. Anything. Thanks, but no. I mean, it's three words. All you have to write is thanks, but no. Now, th this is where I got shit for it because men think that they're owed everything. And so part of what I got back from people, and I'm sure if you're listening, you're nodding along that you were one of the people. No, I'm not sure, but nonetheless, is this, these women don't owe me anything. I either never met them or barely met them. They're not interested. Who the fuck am I to demand, which I'm not, but I am angry about it or obsession to anger. I'm upset about it because it, to me, it's not about what they owe me. And I understand that it's, difficult to parse that and maybe from the white male privilege that I have it, it, I, I can't see that other people maybe don't feel as empowered because a lot of guys to go back to what I was just saying like I'm not going to write back and bitch them out but a lot of guys do and I've heard from friends of mine I've heard from people I've gone out with that men are awful and do not take rejection very well. So just ignoring them is often better than rejecting them. Because rejection hurts and ignoring someone is, is passive. And so if you're afraid of aggression or retribution or any of those, then perhaps being passive is the right way to go. So I understand that. But for me, it just annoys me because if you know me, if you have talked to me for hours back and forth or texted a million times, that's obviously an overstatement, but you know, maybe a hundred times or close to, you should know enough about me. And hopefully I should know enough about them that I would select people who would care about other people enough. Um, and everyone says, oh, you're making this about you. And it's funny because, and I know that I am, and I know that I make everything about me, but but in this case, I'm really trying not to. And I know that by trying not to, I'm doing it even more. And that's a brain fuck. And I don't know how to not do this. So just bear with me on this. Um, but I look at that as what do we owe to each other? Just be a fucking human. Someone who you hung out with, someone who you texted with, asked you to hang out, you gave them a potential yes. You did not say definitively no. You did not say yes, but you said maybe. And all they did was follow up on that day to see if you were still in any way interested or available or not. I think that's basic human contact, basic respect for another person. I am respecting their time by asking them to go out with me 
I'm putting other things on hold. I'm prioritizing them, even though it was a maybe. And so do they owe it to me to just send a text back? I'm not asking them to go out with me just because I asked. I'm not asking them to even be fucking nice to me because I asked. Thanks, but no. Or even fucking just no. Hey, are you available today? You know, weren't you? No. And then if, if the guy gets aggressive, you can block his number or unmatch with him on the dating apps. There's safety protocol in place for situations like that. And, and the fact that there even has to be is horrifying and bullshit. And like men are awful. And I know all these stories. And, and, and I'm not saying I'm any exception because I'm sure I've done some stuff that has overstepped my, um, my stature in their hierarchical relationship structure. That's a weird way to say where I am in the pecking order. Maybe I think I'm more important and they're dating someone else and fuck me because they're going out with another guy and they don't owe it to me at all. And maybe that's what happened. But to me, it's what do we owe to each other? So I'm going to play another clip. This is actually one of the um, women who was an advisor on The Good Place. She actually did a speech uh, at Yale of what we owe to each other. This is the beginning of a Q&A. So I'm gonna cue oh boy, this up. You can see it on the screen now. So we're gonna play this and uh, hopefully it'll capture it. Hello, thanks so much for a wonderful talk. I know that philosophical systems are based in some way around the idea of maximizing happiness of course, no one really knows what happiness is or how to really effectively define it. I wonder if you have a good definition of happiness. No. <laughs> no, it's a great question. There, um, there's, there is a lot of, um, uh, um, so, so there's actually two different uh, philosophical questions that, that you're raising. One is if we're going to be utilitarians, if we're going to um, think uh, that, that what we need to do is bring about the, the best outcome, um, what, what counts as the best? So um, what are we maximizing? And then uh, um, some people, so Amartya Sen, for example, has a, has a pretty good answer to that, I think, which is, well, why don't we just get a list of human goods and we'll try to bring about the most of those? And we'll just you know, talk about what should be on the list. Uh, then there's another question, which is, um, what is happiness? What is a satisfying life? Um, and, and that's a much harder question, I think. Um, and, uh, and it seems correct to me that it's not a feeling, but, um, but also uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a puzzle. Uh, th th there's, a, there's another uh, philosophical puzzle called the paradox of hedonism, which is similar to what we've been talking about. The thought is that the more you try to be happy, that, that, that you don't achieve happiness by trying to be happy that you achieve happiness by trying to do things that you think are worthwhile, and then as you do things that you think are worthwhile, that sa satisfaction is a, is a byproduct of, of doing the things that you think are worthwhile. So that's an interesting way to look at that. And again, that's more about happiness than, than maybe perhaps what do we owe to each other. But the point there is, you know, do what makes you happy. But what is that? What is happiness? Is happiness going on a date with someone you find attractive? Is happiness having a fulfilling job and friend base and then finding that ride or die person? Everybody else is gonna define happiness differently than you. But, but it's difficult at times because if we are all, and this is so altruistic and bullshit given all the stuff that's going on in the world and, place is fucking getting bombed and whatnot so i feel like an asshole even suggesting this but the fact is if you just care about other people then you can achieve mutual happiness no matter what your happiness is now again you know the last time we talked or maybe two times ago i talked about getting friend zoned by someone i cared about and frankly it wasn't friend zoning in the traditional sense of somebody saying let's just be friends and then they blow you off like two weeks later this is a person who i'm actually friends with and going to be friends with. And you know, sometimes that does work out for people who are out there and think like it's all or nothing. It doesn't have to be. Um, if you care about someone and you want them in your life, then figure out a way and figure out a place to put them. 
but it's 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 awkward until you get to that point if one of you thinks that friends is all you're going to be and the other one thinks that there's a romantic component that does not work that's not parallel i don't know what it is or where it intersects but that is not a, a, a parallel thought and that's difficult for people because you're never going to convince someone who doesn't feel romance to feel it certainly not in your time frame if they don't feel it and you do then you're going to be the one who has to back off and just be friends and that's difficult for people to do because those emotions don't just go away that caring doesn't just go away at the same time history has shown that you can grow on someone i didn't i wasn't attracted to him at first but we get along so well and then we spend so much time together all of a sudden that attraction just grew that happens all the time that's the whole concept of like i want to marry my best friend well you're supposed to be friends first and so when somebody says that on a dating site i always think it's hilarious because you're not like how do you look for a best friend if you're 40 years old and don't have a best friend like it's weird to go onto tinder or bumble or hinge or whatever match.com and say like anyone out there want to be a best friend anyone but then once we become best friends then there could be a ro romantic part of, of that too how long does it take to become a best friend i mean it might it doesn't take long to become a friend but even if you really hit it off all cylinders it's going to take months to become a best friend and then you have to put off all of those potential romance uh interests until like it just makes no sense and i understand people are just wishing but that's what that what what is what is happiness what what are you looking for you can't find happiness you can't do happy but you can do things to make you happy you can do things that make you happy i don't even know if you can do things to make you happy i mean sometimes people don't have that control but certainly you can do things that make you happy. And I think that's everyone's goal is to find those things and do as many of those as you can while still being responsible, while still knowing that you are part of a family, part of a community, part of a relationship. You can't just go and do what you want all the time. So what do we owe to each other? What do I owe to my kids? I mean, I'm not going to run down the list of things. Those of us who are parents, you know what you owe to your kids. Not all of us do the best job at that. Not all of us even try to do the best job at that, which is fucking shitty and terrible. I can't tell you how many people I've matched with on sites and they say they're a full-time single parent, which by the way, and I know Scott's talked about this on the show a little bit because he got shit for saying something about being you know, a single parent. And somebody said like, my husband died. You're not a single parent, you're co-parenting. That's two houses, two incomes, you have the kids half the time. That's not a single parent. A single parent is somebody who has the kids 100% of the time. And even some people who are not getting child support or alimony or any of those things from their ex, they have to pay for this all themselves too. That's being a single parent. What I am doing is certainly not a single parent. But that adds another layer to it. So what do I owe to my kids? What do I owe to my ex? one in the agreement that we signed but two just as a person who you know i love and care about no matter how our marriage went and ended that doesn't change that feeling and so i owe a lot to her what do i owe to my parents what do i owe to my brother what do i owe to my other brother what how far does this go because it's not just your kids it's not just your kids and your friends and neighbors and family. It's more than that. But how far does that reach? What do we owe to each other is a way to look at this ecosystem of, of dating and all this stuff. I even look at it like going out in, in Philly to restaurants. People are like, oh my God, you're going out during the pandemic. Like, yeah, because my mental health is more important than my physical health. I know I can recover physically if I happen to get a virus or I expected to be able to recover physically. I'm certainly vaccinated now, so I feel a little differently. Um, but even when I wasn't, I needed to get out. I needed to go do things. I needed to be around other people because I didn't think I would survive it mentally. And that's not an overstatement for people who have listened to the show from the beginning. You know that I am serious about that. And I figured the potential 
for physical uh, malady far outweighed uh, beneficial beneficially to what could have happened mentally. And that was the reason why I went out a lot. But the other reason, and honestly, like the other reason is more important is because I owe it to the restaurant industry. I started recording this. I had to pause Top Chef. I, I can't tell you how many Top Chef uh, owned, you know, chefs own restaurants that I've gone to around the country. A lot. And, and that's sort of like a, a bucket list of mine, you know, certain chefs I like, I want to make sure I hit the restaurants at some point. If I, if somebody asked me like, what do you want to do other than bring my kids to London and Liverpool to watch soccer and look at the Beatles stuff in Liverpool and, you know, hang out in, in England um, with them, I would want to go on like a 10 city tour and go to every good restaurant in all of those cities it would cost a million dollars but it would be worth it and so maybe if i look if there's somebody out there who wants to do that with me and you can afford it and fund my trip too then i'm going with you because i don't know if right now that's really in, in the cards for me but hopefully at some point but what do we owe to our community and I consider our community, at least where I live, to be the city that sustains us. A lot of the people who live in the suburbs work in the city, myself included, for a long time. And so I feel I owe it to those restaurants. I owe it to those businesses to help keep them afloat during this pandemic, during this time where they had to shut down, where they had to figure out a way to survive at 25% capacity, which means 25% of the sales and 25% of the staff, and now they have to start hiring staff back. It's a nightmare for all of them. And I feel that the least I could do is go to a restaurant, order a couple of drinks, order a sandwich or a couple of appetizers and have a great time with someone. Could I have done that at home? Sure. Could I have done that on Zoom or FaceTime? Probably. I mean, it wouldn't be as good a food and certainly the company wouldn't be as, as tactile. But <laughs> But I could have done that. And a lot of people did because you didn't feel safe and because you didn't feel comfortable going out. And I don't begrudge that, but I feel like I owed it to my community for what they have given me over the years, enjoyment, nourishment, culture in, in a sense. And so again, this kind of all started from just sort of an innocuous comment about how I, I, I said, you know, which is worse, someone telling you they'd rather hang out with no one than you or someone telling you they'd rather hang out with their dog. People got really offended by that. Well, she's allowed to have time to herself. And, and, and I misworded that then because the issue wasn't that she didn't want to spend time with me. The issue was that she said that she did and we were just scheduling a time for that. She had said yes to hanging out then we were trying to schedule a time and then she never responded. So the issue was that I never got a response. The issue for me was not, she changed her mind or it was a maybe. And then the maybe turned into a no, I could give a shit about that. I was very busy this week. Trust me. I could use Wednesday off. I went out Saturday. No Sunday. I had the kids this weekend. Then I went out Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It was, I was happy to have a couple of days off from going out but it would have been nice to know because then I would have had the ability to make other plans or I would have had the ability even to just know that this person respects me enough to just send a text. Thanks, but no. And so I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to not make this about me, but I'm the only one talking. And so it's my experience, but it's not about what this woman owes me or what that woman with the dog owes me. To me, it's about what we owe to each other. There's one more thing I want to talk about briefly. So I got, I'm not going to show you the picture, but I got a, uh, a match request on hinge from someone and I uh, clicked on her profile and she had responded to me. I updated my hinge profile and put this 
as one of my prompt answers, a social cause I care about. My new statement, which is what this woman responded to, why do people who defend the Second Amendment seem so willing to ignore the first and the 13th and the 14th and the 15th and the 19th? That's my comment. Look it up if you don't know what those amendments are. This woman wrote, because I, I list myself as a cisgender man, and we talked about why in the past, but she said cisgender, had to look that up, learn something new. Curious, is that notation a way to bring recognition to the updated pronouns gender type? And I explained why, and, and, and obviously the answer to that is yes. And as the example I always use is you wouldn't see two men standing in front of you, and if you had to tell the person next to you which one you were uh, talking about, you wouldn't say... Uh, the man and the Asian man or the man and the Indian man or the black man. And, and, and because that would presuppose that just man means the white guy. You would say white man and Indian man or Asian man or black man. That's how, that's how we do it. There's a qualifier on both. One is not a man and one is a fill in the blank other type of man. So why would we ever do that for someone who's transgender? That person is just a man or a woman. I mean, obviously it goes both ways, but it's not the man and the trans man. There are two men standing there. But because everyone points out, because we talk about, is it a responsibility of someone on a dating site to notate that they are a transgender man or woman, which I don't know the answer to that, but a lot of people do feel that it's their responsibility or, or, or someone's responsibility to, to make sure that potential matches know that. And so to normalize that, to me, it makes sense to put cisgender, which is essentially the gender I was assigned at birth, I still am, for very layman terms. But when I looked at that woman's profile, she had conservative on her profile. And it's interesting that she matched with me on the dig on the Second Amendment or not the dig on the second amendment, the dig on people who support the second amendment and don't give a shit about the rest of the amendments. And I asked her, I was like, oh, you're a conservative. And she wrote, oh yeah, I meant to take that out of my profile. And I said, I'm interested in knowing why you had it, why you, were, why you want to take it out. She hasn't written back. So clearly not something that she has any interest in talking about, or maybe she's been busy, but I don't expect to hear back from her at this point. It's been a couple of days. And it's just really interesting to me because I think sometimes when you see liberal and you are conservative or vice versa, um, in the past, we would just be like, yeah, you know, disagree on policies, disagree on, you know, maybe taxation. But conservative essentially now online means Trump. And it might not. And that's what I wanted to ask this woman. Did she want to take it off because she was tired of people assuming that she's a Trump supporter? or that she's a conspiracy theorist. Because now it's even further. Now, if you say that you voted for Trump, you're QAnon. I mean, that's just basically what we all think. Because I mean, look at the Republican Party, frankly. They're kicking out a woman from power who says, that guy's lying. Everyone needs to say that that guy's lying because he's lying. And all of the other Republicans are like, we don't care anymore if he's lying because people like him. So we're gonna get rid of you so you stop making us tell everyone he's lying because we're now forced to lie about whether or not we think he's lying. And it's horrifying. The same people are on the floor of Congress defending a woman who thinks that Jew lasers are starting wars and bamboo is in ballots or whatever. These insane conspiracies. They defend her to keep her on committees. But a woman who I disagree with fundamentally, but is principled and is telling the truth, they're like, nope, you're a distraction. Like, think about that. So, so for a while, I thought that maybe we could get past that. Like, if I match with somebody who's conservative, like, yeah, we might just disagree. But if you align yourself with that thought process, you are not for me. And certainly I am not for you. If you align with that belief system that what is happening right now is okay, we do not agree. That talk about parallel lines. And so I'm very interested 
in a woman who says, oh, shoot, I thought I took that off. Is it because she's not really political and she doesn't want to have that debate? Or is it because she's sick of it and she wants to meet somebody who is interested in other things and politics is just, you know, the backdrop? So I hope to hear back. And if I do, I will let everyone know because that's really interesting to me. I mean, I am very clear in my prompts and in my photos which way which side of the aisle I'm on and I love it when people either don't realize or don't know and then that question comes up so we'll see if that comes back and no I'm not going to complain next time that she never wrote me back because she does not owe me anything if it's what do we owe to each other that woman literally owes me nothing less than nothing if it's possible yeah and so that's it I wish I had more updates on what this is going to look like going forward timing. I need to do a better job of being more consistent because like I said, at the beginning of this, if we owe things to each other, I definitely owe all of you more than that. And I apologize. Um, I will do better. And so talk to you next time.